Hi, my name is Islin Monastery and I'm with Heal and Be Rich. And today we'll be talking about having lots of ideas when you're manic or hypomanic, or even when you're just bipolar. Now, every idea seems like a good idea if you're manic or hypomanic. You want to do all of your ideas all at once and you'll have infinite amounts of energy to pursue all of them. That's the mindset that I was in when I was manic. Then there is the calm, or should I say not the calm, but there is the depression after the storm. And then it's very hard to get out of bed even. I know I, it was hard for me when I was depressed after being in a manic state for about one or two months, I went into a deep depression. So the key is to slow down your thought process during hypomania or mania. This printable will help you calm down and also make sure that you keep your thoughts are slowed down. Once your thoughts are slowed down, then you can have a better kind of metric for whether or not your ideas are worth pursuing or not. And this printable will help you slow down those thoughts. Now, in the list of ideas, that's the first thing that we'll fill out. The list of ideas, there's six roughly in the printable, but you can have as many ideas as you want. So you can have a separate sheet of paper and write down all of your ideas, no matter how insignificant they are, just write them all down. And they all might seem like good ideas right now. There are some things to think about as you go through these ideas. Now, can you do these ideas one year, two years, five years, 10 years from now? Now, Peter Diamandis, who is running the X Prize, and he also runs the Abundance 360 Mastermind for 360 entrepreneurs. In 2013, he made a kind of announcement that he was going to do Abundance 360 for 25 years. Now, where the, f now, So when you're looking at the list of ideas, what is realistically possible? Next, you want to assess your ideas and projects. So you have to look at it in terms of the cost. What are the time, money, and emotional costs that it will take to pursue this idea? So how would you go about carrying it out? Now for me, I had a podcasting idea. So we'll go through the, the example of podcasting in terms of time, cost, and emotional, time, money, and emotional cost. Now, first of all, with time cost, you can go into the relevant steps and section and write down all of your steps and then come up with a time that way. For me, for podcasting, I would have to find my guests and then contact them, schedule a time, and then record the podcast. Then I would have to edit the podcast and then push it out on social channels after I had published it. So there's a lot to do. So for me, that would take about five to 10 hours per week. Next would be money. So for money, what's the cost of equipment or services that you would have to have to get this going. So for me, it would be spending so much money on a microphone and then spending some money on a website as well. So to start the podcast, I would also need to invest in a podcast hosting service at a certain amount of money per month. So in this step, think about all of the materials and services that you would need to get your uh, project off the ground. I wouldn't skimp on the money here because you'd find yourself spending a lot more 
time and a lot more money than you expected on bringing this idea to fruition. Next are the emotional costs. It's hard to quantify what they are, but there's a great article in Startup Co. that talks about running out of stamina, positivity, and physical wellness in pursuit of a startup. So when you're in pursuit of a startup, you know, it's not only your finances that you're draining, it's also your emotional cost as well. Now, your emotional costs can be many, even if it's just a small idea, but you're trying to pursue it while you're manic or hypomanic, it can be a disaster or it can be really good. Um, so that depends, but remember the, uh, the depression that comes after the mania. So next are your benefits. So what's the benefit of doing this idea? Will it bring more money? Will it expand your client base? Now, if your idea is a business or starting a business or something like that, you'd want to build a business plan. A business plan helps you flesh out your ideas and make sure that you have competitors and uh, other things like and resources that make sure that you actually fought through your idea before starting it. Your idea may also provide active and passive income. Now remember, with passive income, which is making money while you sleep, while you sell online courses, and that type of thing, it takes a lot longer than you expect to start um, making money off passive income. So you have to really think about it a long time before, you know, thinking that your idea will generate lots of money right away. And then finally, your idea might make you um, meet different people, which is great. So I'm more extroverted when I'm manic, but when I'm my normal self, I'm more introverted. So that's something to think about if you're going to be stepping out of your comfort zone and really stepping out of your comfort zone when you're back in your normal state and you're no longer manic or hypomanic. Next are resources. Now, what resources would you need to undertake this venture? I like to do a competitor analysis and see what my competitors are doing in this space and what follower accounts do they have? How long has their business been in place? That's important to know if your venture will be successful or not. Now, I'm now, if it's like an at-home idea or something like scrapbooking, uh, that that's something different. But if your ideas include starting a business or something really grandiose, think it through first. And I'd also suggest talking to your spouse or significant other, your friends and family about these ideas before you start doing them, because that can help ground you and help See if your ideas really are that out of line. Now, what are the specific steps that you need to undertake? There's not a lot of room there, so I would put down maybe four or five steps, but know that there's a lot more steps involved. So with the podcasting idea, I would um, you know, have to find guests, schedule them, record and edit, master the audio, publish the audio, push it out on social channels. So there's a lot of things to do with a podcast. So keep it high level, but know that there's a lot of other steps involved in between the steps that you're writing down. And finally, probably the most important part is what are you giving up to do this? Now, you have to think about what you're giving up to do this. Is it spending less time with the kids? Is it spending less hours at work and you're still working a 40 hour week? Uh, what, what is it that you're giving up? Now, when hypomania or mania strikes, it feels like you can stay up for days on end and you can do whatever you want, but realize that mania and hypomania have endings. Um, 
you know, it can go on for like a week or six months, but it has an ending. And so when that ends, so when the mania ended for me, I had to end my business because I didn't have the extra time and space and energy, most importantly, to pursue it. So finally, you want to prioritize your list of ideas and projects. And if you're brave, you can add a timeline. Now, hopefully after you've gone through all these steps, you've realized how much time and effort and energy it will take to pursue these ideas. And maybe some of your ideas have fallen off the list. Have they passed the 25 year mark for you to want to do it for 25 years? Would that be something that you would want to do long term? So once you've evaluated that, you can see what ideas you want to do. Now for each business idea or each idea, you'd want to go through each of the steps of defining the cost, the benefits, the specific steps, and the resources it will take to make it happen. Hopefully by providing this framework, I can help you modulate and maybe see if your ideas are realistic or not to pursue. And remember when you're manic or hypomanic, there is the fall afterwards. There is the depression afterwards. And sometimes all you can do is get up and go to work still. So that's all I wanna have to say. And if you like this video, please subscribe. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks.